Good morning, everyone, back from your coffee break. Hope you've had a chance to get a cup of coffee, tea, whatever you drink. We had a wonderful, very thorough presentation from Sam Rainey on IVRT methods. And this is a very nice into the next session. The next session is on U.S. Pharmacopoeia General Chapters 1724 and 1002. Today, you will hear from two speakers. USP General Chapter has needed revision due to advances in IVRT method development and validation practices, new instrumentation, and recent publication of product-specific product guidance documents, especially in the acyclovir cream guidance where IVPT is recommended. The expert panel on topical transdermal dosage form has been working in revising this chapter. Chapter 102 was written as part of the same revision process. Uh, our next speaker, Dr. Margaret Marks, is a principal scientist at USP and manages documentary standards on dissolution, drug release, and ophthalmic products and products applied to skin. She is the liaison for revising chapters 1724 and 1002. Dr. Marks. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to thank the kind introduction by Kayla, and also I'd like to thank Dr. Raining for the invitation to participate in this meeting to share with you the updates that we are working on performance tests for thin solid dosage forms. As Dr. Rain discussed in the previous presentation, the chapter 1724 semi solid drug products performance test has been official for several years. And this chapter discusses in vitro release test that uses a synthetic membrane and gives details on the equipment that can be used, the different types. It discusses how to run the test according to the equipment, describes how to use this um, methodology during product development, product uh, assessment, selection of different suppliers for certain excipients, selection of different qualities of different excipients, and so on. And it's also well used for post-approval changes, as Dr. Sha explained it early this morning. And it has the calculations and the tables. It, it explains how to evaluate the results to apply for a post approval change using these kind of tests. As we discussed yesterday, we saw that there are several issues, mainly with semi screens, but it can be extrapolated for other products. And based on the papers published by FDA and other groups, and based on the FDA guidance, now we can see that the use of this kind of tests can be expanded to evaluate other parameters. And this is the reason for the major revision of the chapter 1724. Right now, the current version, the version that is official, we are discussing only in vitro release testing where you use the synthetic membranes. And because of all these discussions on sunny screens and other products that have been going on, it was decided to revise the chapter to include in vitro permeation testing, to include the equipment, to include the procedures. And in this case, we are going to use human skin. And the, like uh, Dr. Rainey said early this morning, the equipment in general is the same that you are going to use for an IVRT. But instead of a synthetic membrane, you are going to use human skin. And just after my presentation, my colleague Leandro, he's going to give you more details about all the topics that we are revising in the chapter 1724 to include the IVPT and also to expand method validation and equipment qualification. To do this major revision, we have an expert panel and on the screen you can see the members of this group. We have been working for, I think, more than one year on this revision. 
and it looks like the revision is going to be published in the beginning of 2022. During the discussions on the revision of 1724, and <clears throat> based on the discussions yesterday, we yesterday we discussed it a lot how to qualify the human skin, how to select. And this morning, Dr. Rainey discussed the filters that you are going to use for IVRT. And during the discussions on the revision for 1724, we came up with the idea of creating a new chapter that the number is 1002. And the, <coughs> the title is provisional. We don't know if this is going to be the final title, but we are initially we are proposing filters and membranes. And <coughs> we would like you to discuss to give a at least a starting point when you are selecting a synthetic membrane for IVRT and when you are selecting human or animal skin when you are going to do an IVPT. We would like to discuss how to qualify, which kind of information you needed to gather, like we discussed it mainly yesterday afternoon. And this chapter is going to be also applicable to other analytical procedures like chromatography, dissolution, particle and foreign matter, microbiology, and so on. So <clears throat> this is why it's a new uh, chapter and it's very broad and it's going to be a starting point when you are selecting a filter or a membrane for a particular application in the evaluation of pharmaceutical products. And right now, we are thinking about um, initial outline for this chapter to discuss the filtration procedures like by gravity, vacuum, pressure, and et cetera, to discuss the material of construction of filters and membranes, photo size, the issue of adsorption of the drug substance or any other component on the formulation, the issue of leachables and extractables, because this can interfere with your quantitative step, how you are going to make the selection, and how you are going to validate, qualify, or even check the integrity. Like yesterday, we had some discussion on how to, there are several procedures that you can use to evaluate, to check the integrity of the skin. And we would like you to discuss a little bit of these procedures in this new chapter 1002. So everything, every time USP proposes a revision, the revision is published in the Pharmacopoeia Forum. Here you have the link. The access is free of charge. You need to register, but it's free. And you can do search by keyword, you can do search by uh, title, by number, by whatever you want. You can um, copy and paste, you can save as PDF, you can do whatever you need to do, and you can always refer that you got this information from Pharmacopoeia Forum. And this publication is downloaded in the website every two months, and it's kept there for a period of 90 days for public comment. And because this uh, revision to 1724 is a major one, I really encourage you to access uh, Pharmacopoeia Forum to see what we are going to propose and to send your comments and suggestions. And also because this is a major revision, we are going to promote the revision in social media. So as soon as it's downloaded in this website, we are going to promote in social media so everybody can be aware and you can send any comments or suggestions or questions to us. Regarding the chapter 1002, we are looking for collaborators. So if you would like to collaborate in any way with this chapter on filters and membranes, please just let me know because we would like to cover several different techniques. We would like to cover validation, leachables and extractables, and we need the expertise from different areas. So if you have anything that you think it should be useful to put in this chapter for filters and membranes, 
please let me know and I can include you in the working group that is developing this new chapter. And here, here you have my email address. So feel free to let me know if you'd like to collaborate in the big revision of 1724, or if you'd like to collaborate in this new chapter, 1002. If you have any other questions about USP, you can send it to me and I can forward it to the appropriate person within the organization. So thank you. And I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.